Made it back to the city following day nine of 49ers training camp. Here is the analysis from beautiful Corona Heights, one of the most underrated views of the entire city. Maybe we'll get to some underrated 49ers players today as we go through this practice and we look through it in real detail, not just an instant reaction, but in real analysis. First of all, we have to go through the guys who are missing. Brandon Ayuk did make a very brief appearance. He peeked his head out of the weight room and was watching for a little bit, but the hold in there continues. Trent Williams is not at the facility, so the holdout continues. No Darrell Luter Jr. today. We haven't found out what exactly is wrong with the second year cornerback, but he's been having a good camp. And obviously the 49ers will hope that he is back soon. Curtis Robinson missed his third practice in a row. That is the linebacker out of Stanford, who's been a special teams stalwart for the 49ers in recent years. Logan Thomas still out with his hamstring injury. Isaac Grendo, same boat, <laughs> hamstring injury. Pat Elfline, who is the 49ers' new offensive lineman, uh, they signed him yesterday, and he hurt his calf early in his first practice. Elfline is out with that calf injury. Spencer Burford, a couple more weeks with the broken hand. Cam Lawtu was still on the sideline. We haven't talked to Cam uh, to Kyle Shanahan since Cam Lawtu went out, so uh, the specific injury update has not yet come. I will say that Cam Lawtu needs to get back out on that field so he can fight for a roster spot because the 49ers will probably take four tight ends, but three of those spots already seem to be locked in between George Kittle, Eric Saubert, and Braden Willis, who made a diving catch at practice today. Jacob Cowling and Tay Martin, the two receivers with hamstring injuries, they should be back shortly for the 49ers. And that's going to be interesting because do they take six receivers? Do they take seven? I'll tell you what, a couple years ago when Jalen Hurd was getting uh, another chance to make the team, they took seven very briefly because it was projected as a choice between Jawan Jennings and Jalen Hurd. Well, it ended up being the 49ers took both of them, at least to begin that 2021 season. But uh, if they're only taking six, which I think we had anticipate, then it might even be a battle at the very end there between Chris Conley and Trent Taylor. I talked about that yesterday. Maybe one of them goes to the 53, the other one goes to the practice squad. Uh, guys like Ronnie Bell, guys like Danny Gray. Danny Gray caught a deep touchdown pass today. Ronnie Bell had some nice blocking and caught a nice intermediate ball today. All those guys, roster bubble guys, and they're fighting here as we have entered the dog days of August. Just a really, really long practice. And the guys who came back for this practice off of injuries, Aaron Banks, he had back spasms, so he was back in there at left guard, although the 49ers uh, have been operating a lot of load management along the offensive line. I'll get into that, how, how that has worked. Jawan Jennings was back from his ankle injury. I mentioned Jawan Jennings was in San Francisco the other day. San Francisco Fire Department truck number 13 saw Jawan Jennings at Union Square, and he saw him as well. And Jarrett Kingston, after missing a couple practices, the 49ers rookie offensive lineman picked in the sixth round is back. They talk about load management along the offensive line. Well, Jake Brendel is the starting center, but he's not seeing 100% of the snaps with the first team. Today, they're able to mix Nick Zakel in with the first team, and we've seen quite a bit of that. Nick Zakel also got some first team left guard reps. John Feliciano, back at practice for the second day off the knee injury, was getting second team center reps for the 49ers. And then you had Ben Barch get both left guard and right guard reps for San Francisco with that second team. Chris Furster, the offensive line coach, talked uh, before practice today, and he said that Brandon Parker and Chris Hubbard, the two veterans, are in a competition to be this team's swing tackle. It appears that there's also a competition for a swing interior offensive lineman, and I would say that Nick Zakel and Ben Barch are in that conversation. I think John Feliciano has his spot assured as being a utility lineman at the very least for the 49ers. They've got a lot of guys that can play center. The question is, do they have somebody that can play it well enough for this system? Because as you know, the quarterback doesn't assign protections in this system. Quarterback has a lot of other worries in the Shanahan system, especially with all the motion. The center has always been the position that uh, points out the Mike linebacker and assigns protections, also has to look at the safety rotations. So it's a very, very important position cerebrally for the 49ers. Anyway, that line has been in a little bit of disarray just because you've got guys 
uh, moving around. The 49ers trying to figure out the best combinations, hosting a lot of com uh, combinations up front. It is still early August, still over a month before the first game. Obviously, the, the big fish of that offensive line is not yet around. That's Trent Williams. That's going to be a big domino for the 49ers uh, to solve and to figure out at some point. So they need Trent back at the left side. And we talked to Colton McKivitz today. Colton McKivitz said, you know, he, he, I thought he had a decent uh, week here for the 49ers. Today he gave up a couple pressures to, to Leonard Floyd. And I, I've talked a lot about Floyd and the speed rush that he brings. Well, he ran around Colton McKivitz a couple times. L Leonard Floyd is going to be a productive player for the 49ers. Bring that speed opposite Nick Bosa. But, uh, but Colton McKivitz spoke to the media after practice today and his main thing was that he, he thinks that he has a whole new realm of play, a whole new level of performance that he could reach in his second year. So we'll see. I mean, in one-on-ones, we've watched Nick Bosa have his way easily with Colton McKivitz. But that's also Nick Bosa. And we know that Colton uh, is not going to be a world-beating pass protector. But uh, Chris Furster today likened him to Mike McGlinchey in the run game. He said he's not quite at McGlinchey's level. McGlinchey was obviously an elite uh, run blocker, and, and he was a below-average pass blocker. Last year, McKivitz and McGlinchey were right near the bottom of all qualifying tackles as far as pass block efficiency, uh, but, but he was a good run blocker. Again, he wasn't in that top five like Mike McGlinchey, but I think the 49ers can get a little bit more uh, juice out of Colton McKivitz this year in both run blocking and pass blocking. So the, you know, the totality of this line, once the season starts, the 49ers hope that the trial by fire of training camp, the experiments that they run in the preseason, they hope that they can elevate the level of pass protection that, uh, they, that they had last year, which wasn't good outside of Trent Williams. They're hoping for a better year from Aaron Banks now that he's going to be healthier. I know he had the back spasms, but last year he was dealing with a turf toe. They're hoping for a better level of play from their center position. I think, uh, you know, Jake Brendel was dealing with the knee tendonitis already last year, but the, they're cross-training many other players and getting a lot of other different bodies ready for that position just in case push comes to shove there. And they firmly believe they can make right guard better. And that's where Dominic Pooney, the rookie, comes in. I thought Pooney today held his own against both Malik Collins and Jordan Elliott, the two 49ers' new defensive tackles uh, on, in one-on-one -on -one drills. So, and Pooney's got an anchor. We, I mean, we, we know that he's a better pass protector than run blocker. We know that he could potentially raise the ceiling of and, and even the floor of that position, which is so important at right guard, given the fact that was a weakness for the 49ers last year. Well, Dominic Pooney today in one-on-ones against Malik Collins, who's big and strong. Chris Kosarek was happy with Malik Collins and some of the movement drills they're doing today. I mean, he, he should be a solid player for the 49ers replacing Eric Armstead, but it was Dominic Pooney who held his own against him today. I would say that once team drills started, Jordan Elliott did flash. Jordan Elliott did have a nice practice for the 49ers. Disruptive against the run. You never know what exactly is a sack and what isn't because – Quarterbacks can't be touched, but it did appear that he got to the QB today. Elliott's like the Javon Kinlaw this year. Kinlaw left to the Jets. Armstead, obviously, uh, was cut for, by the 49ers and left to Jacksonville. So Malik Collins is going to be the first-string replacement for Eric Armstead. And Javon Kinlaw, who was a second-stringer for the 49ers last year, I would say that Jordan Elliott, who's a wide body, probably a wider body, actually, than Javon Kinlaw, who was – lengthier, but obviously it was built like a pillar of granite. I just think that they've got more of a run-stuffing defensive tackle type in Jordan Elliott. It was funny because Javon Kinlaw really developed into a pass rusher, had his best year pass rushing last year, but wasn't, a great, wasn't as great against the run. So maybe Jordan Elliott will be able to help the 49ers in that regard. I mentioned Leonard Floyd. He's been impressive. Every single time Bosa is not on a vet day, boy, he... Uh, he gets the job done out there. Nick Bosa is a force of nature. And this season he has training camp versus last season when he didn't. And I will finish this by pointing out that Debo Samuel, he's not taken a vet day yet. The 49ers have played 20 games in each of the past three seasons, 60 games in three seasons. So you've got guys left and right uh, taking understandable vet days to keep their bodies fresh because all of that adds up. Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, 
Uh, Debo Samuel, no, no vet days for Debo Samuel. He is out there grinding every day, doing it quietly. I think Debo is in line to have a massive, massive year. All right, everybody take care from Corona Heights. We'll see you all soon. Tomorrow's practice back at Levi Stadium, but we'll, we'll do a live tonight, so be ready for that.